and welcome to Graphic Online News in Brief. In the headlines, National Cathedral projects to become a profit-making venture. Woman who condemned Kotoka Airport COVID-19 test as quack returns with an apology. Ashanti Regional Minister charges MMDAs to enforce COVID-19 safety protocols amidst spike in cases. IGP assures with the country protesters of maximum protection during August 4 demonstration, the Sud Asin North MP predicts he will retain the seat and government announces reward for medal winners at 2020 Olympic Games. News in Brief is brought to you by Download your Graphic News Plus now and choose your preferred package daily, weekly, monthly and annually and access free news on various interest areas as well. Graphic News Plus, connecting people through news. And now the News in Brief. The National Cathedral is suspected to generate about $83 million within three to five years of its completion. This is according to the Executive Director of the National Cathedral Secretariat, Dr. Paulo Pukumensa, who describes facilities to be built within the National Cathedral as income generators. According to Dr. Paul Pukumensa, who insists the National Cathedral project is an investment, it is expected to drive traffic to the country due to its uniqueness. It will have facilities as a Bible museum, multi-purpose halls for various activities, a 350 sit-up restaurant, and banquet halls. We are integrating uh, a museum, a 350 uh, sit-up restaurant. You are, so all these are income generators. So that, that's what you pay. It's an investment. So what, when is the payback period then? We, once what you is it? No, no, actually, no, yeah. no. Ben, I don't, I'm serious on this one because no, I am. Have, once you say it's an investment, are you, we what, have what actually, method of uh, what what method of evaluation are you using to say that in X amount of years it will raise this amount of we money? Have, we have we we actually have uh, an economic uh, consultant looking at this. Uh, looking at the, the the whole economic impact mm -hmm. uh, of both the visitors coming here, uh, the usage of the facilities, mm -hmm. uh, and and within a, a three year uh, five year period, uh, based on just very 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 conservative estimates, about eighty two million dollars. A woman seen in a viral video describing results of COVID nineteen test conducted at the Kutuka International Airport as quack and a money-making scheme has returned to apologize for being misinformed about the whole process. Mrs. Ivy Abwaje criticized the positive outcome of her test, claiming it is fake because she had only days to arriving in Ghana tested negative. In a new video, Mrs. Abwaje explained she was in distress when she recorded the initial video. She has since been educated on the possibility of testing positive within 24 hours of testing negative. Her initial video caught the attention of key stakeholders, including a member of the COVID-19 Tax Force, Dr. Bernard Okoboy, who responded to her outburst in another video, saying that the testing process at the Kotoka International Airport are genuine and effective. Hi, um, this is Ivy Abuaji over here. I'm here to render an apology to the crew at the airport um, I am very, very sorry because um, upon boarding my flight, I, I did the test and it tested negative. So getting over here and then me testing positive, it was buffled, buffling to me. But I spoke to some health personnel and they said it is possible that you can test within 24 hours and still test uh, positive. Now to M Plaza and the crew over here and the doctor, the nurses over here, I am very very sorry for what I said about this place. Still on COVID-19, the Ashanti Regional Minister Mr. Simon Osei Mensa has entreated Metropolitan, Municipal and District Chief Executives in the region to work with security agencies to enforce the coronavirus disease safety protocols. He says enforcement of the protocols will help control the Delta variant of the COVID-19 which is spreading fast in the region. The onset of the new variant, that is the Delta variant, Shanti region has seen a very sharp upsurge in the number of cases. Because of this, it has become necessary to tighten 
the enforcement of the various COVID protocols within the region. We are urging all the metropolitan, municipal, and district chief executives to join hands with the respective security councils to ensure mandatory wearing of face masks in all communities, provide Veronica backers and public places, including markets, lorry parks, and health centers, make public announcements to increase awareness of the new wave and the need to enforce the protocols. Away from COVID-19, the National Democratic Congress candidate in the Ascent North 2020 parliamentary election, James Jachikwesin, says he still remains the MP for Ascent North and that he will fight to retain the seat. Mr. Kwesin, who was speaking to some constituents in Ascent North, urged the people to rally behind him to ensure he remains their representative to guarantee development in the area. I'm fighting for you people. If I have devoted my life, I have my life, I see what I am going to do. I have a lot of people who are going to be able to do that. I have a lot of people who are going to be able to do that. I have a lot of people who are going to be able to do that. I have a lot I'm still your member of parliament. I'm still your member of parliament. The acting inspector general of police, Dr. George Kufu Dampari, is ensuring the fix the country protesters of maximum security during their scheduled demonstration on Wednesday, August 4. Conveners and the police on Monday finalized arrangements for the march to protest rising economic hardships in the country. A statement issued by the Economic Fighters League says acting IGP Dr. George Okufu Dampari assured of full police collaboration after a tete-a-tete -tete meeting the IGP. The statement noted that the conveners have also pledged to ensure adherence to COVID-19 safety protocols during the protest. The Fix the Country advocacy began in May this year and has garnered growing support, particularly on social media, where the conveners highlighted some economic hardships and urged the government to address them. In our final story, the Minister of Youth and Sports, Mustafa Yusuf, has confirmed that the state will pay out a financial reward to any Ghanaian athlete that wins a medal at the ongoing Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan. In July this year, the sports minister indicated that rewards were to be announced when the athletes returned with medals from Japan. However, he tells Graphic Online in an interview that gold medal winners will receive $5,000, $4,000 for silver medal winners, and $3,000 for bronze medal winners. Currently, only one Ghanaian athlete, featherweight boxer Samotechi, has won a bronze medal. Meanwhile, Ghana's last hope for another medal will be in the men's 4x100 relay on Thursday, August 5, 2021. Thank you for watching. we we'll see you again with another edition. Stay safe and protect yourself from COVID-19. For more news, visit graphic.com.gh or log on to Facebook at Daily Graphic and on YouTube at GraphicGH. I'm Ama Amankwa Befi. Subscribe now.